In today's episode, we're going to be making this walnut coffee table. The whole base of this coffee table was made out of this one board. It's an 8 quarter thick, 15 inch wide piece of walnut. I begin by cutting the legs by first choosing the straightest grain on the board. For legs and aprons, I prefer for the grain to not compete with other components like panels or tops, so in this case, straight grain it is. Before taking the leg stock to be milled, I always cut them close to their final width and length. This makes the milling process much easier and faster, especially for jointing. With the parts milled to their final thickness, I head over to the table saw to take them down to their final width of 2 and 3 quarters of an inch. The legs have a taper from top to bottom, so I built a tapering jig to help with this task. I line up the top of the leg flush with the edge of the jig and all but an inch of the bottom of the leg will overhang the jig to be removed, creating the taper. To remove the mill marks left by the saw, I use my bevel up smoothing plane. All it took was a few passes and the surface is pretty much finish ready. I carried the curved theme of the coffee table into the legs by putting a round over on both edges of the back side of the legs. I made this in two passes by raising the bit a little bit each time to prevent any tear out. All four aprons are achieved using bent lamination, which is gluing thin pieces of wood together over a bending form to the desired shape. I begin by cutting two strips of wood from the two inch thick piece of walnut that will make up the front and back aprons. To cut the 3 16 strip, I joint one face and one edge before resawing the strips at the bandsaw. After each strip is resawn, I head back over to the joiner to joint the face before resawing the next piece. I keep this up until I have six strips. I kept the strips a sixteenth of an inch thicker than they needed to be so I can run them through my drum sander to clean them up and to take them down to an eighth of an inch thick. To prep the pieces for the bending form, I applied Tight Bond 2 Extend to the back side of five of the six pieces, making sure not to put glue on the last piece. Because I did. And luckily I had an extra piece because cleaning glue off of the entire piece would not have been fun. With the parts prepped, I flip it over and stick it on the bending form. To help hold everything into place, I wrapped some packing tape on each end and stuck the bending form in the vacuum bag. This is the first time I've done bent lamination using the vacuum press and it is so much easier than using clamps. Just leave it in the bag for about an hour for this type of glue and then pull it out. I let the aprons continue to cure on the bending form for an additional 4 hours just to make sure the glue had dried. The smaller side aprons are the same exact process glue between each layer and then stick it in the vacuum bag for an hour followed by four more hours outside of the bag to make sure the glue is dried. To clean up the glue on the aprons, I joint one edge keeping the face up against the fence. Then I reference that clean edge up against the table saw fence to take the aprons down to their final width. To begin cutting the joinery I first need to cut the angle on the ends of the aprons. So using a protractor, I found the correct angle and cut the ends of the bending form to match that angle. So now it's just a matter of placing the apron back on the bending form and cutting them to length at the correct angle. For the front and back aprons, that angle was six and a half degrees. For the smaller side aprons, they were simply cut at 90 degrees since the sides of the legs were flat and didn't have a taper. The joiner method for the entire project was cut using the Festool Domino. So pretty much all I needed to do was make two marks on each end of the four aprons and then reference those marks while using the Domino. To transfer the markings from the longer aprons to the legs, I first prop them up using a couple of dominoes to make the aprons flush with the edge of the legs. Next I inset them about a half of an inch since the aprons won't be flush with the top of the legs. I then transfer the marks. With the domino lined up with the marks, I make the cuts. Each leg will receive two cuts for each apron. To mark for the smaller aprons, I begin by propping them up with a couple pieces of quarter inch MDF. I make the aprons flush with the edge of the legs and then transfer the marks. And then it's as simple as lining up the center line on the domino with the marks and then make the cuts. 
Moving on to the riser blocks, I make a mark 9 inches from the edge of the leg. With the board laying on the aprons, I scribe a line which shows me the angle that I need to cut for it to fit the curve. Since the top will be floating, I needed to remove the waste from the corner of the riser block since you would be able to see it when you're looking at the side of the table. I made a mark a half inch down from the top, and using a roll of tape, I scribed a gentle curve that looked pleasing. I removed the waste using the bandsaw and then cleaned up the curve using the spindle sander. And like the rest of the pieces, I made a couple of marks on each end for the loose joinery. Finally, I head over to the miter saw and cut the angles that were scribed from before. It ended up being a 2 degree angle on each end of the riser block. With the riser blocks reinstalled, I transfer the marks to the back of the aprons. The final piece of this project is of course the top. I found this beautiful slab at my local sawmill that was perfect for this project because it was a short, wide slab. The first step was to remove the live edge with the track saw from both sides of the slab. To flatten the slab, I used my router sled setup that I'd used before in previous videos. I begin by placing the slab on my workbench and then I place shims under the gaps at the ends of the slab to prevent it from rocking. I use hot glue to hold the shims in place. My setup is no more than a couple pieces of plywood that act as rails that the melamine sled rides on. As for the router bit, I used a 2 inch double flute bit to help make this process a little quicker. To begin flattening the slab, I find the highest spot on the twisted slab and then I set my bit about a sixteenth of an inch below that and then I very slowly start removing the waste working from one end of the slab to the other. I'll keep lowering the bit until I have the slab flat, which can take quite a while and it is a very messy job, so you want to wear your respirator, your hearing protection, and of course your eye protection. With one side of the slab flat, I flip it over and use hot glue to hold it in place while I start working on the rough side. Since one side of the slab is flat, no shims are needed. I'll keep repeating this process until the slab is approximately an inch and a quarter thick. With the slab flat and the shop clean again, I can now cut the curves on the top. I trace the templates I made on all four sides. To remove the bulk of the waste, I use the jigsaw followed by a flush trim bit and the router. I begin by removing the waste from the end grain just in case there's any tear out. That will get cleaned up when I remove the waste from the sides of the top. When removing the end grain, I also let the router dictate how much it wanted to remove and then it took several passes until the ends were flush with the template. Next I tape down the longer apron and flush up the sides of the top. I always like to add a little profile to the tops of my tables. For this table, I felt that running a chamfer on the bottom side of the top will give the appearance that the top is thinner and it also complements the style that I'm trying to achieve. Again to prevent tear out, I started with the end grain and then I also made this in two passes, lowering the bit an eighth of an inch each time. After routing the chamfer on the top, I realized that I wanted the top to float instead of sitting on the top of the legs. Luckily this is easy to change by simply gluing a half inch thick piece of walnut to the top of the riser blocks. Before finishing I needed to fill a few cracks that the slab had in it. I begin by taping the bottom of the slab to prevent it from bleeding through. Next I pour tinted epoxy in the cracks and use a propane torch to remove any bubbles that formed. It took a total of three sessions to fully fill the cracks. To attach the top, I am simply drilling through the riser blocks by first starting with a 3 8 inch Forstner bit to countersink for the screw. And then I follow that up with a quarter inch bit. To allow the top to expand and contract, I elongated the holes by moving the quarter inch bit side to side when drilling it. Before glue up, I sand everything up to 220 grit with my orbital sander. For curves like on the riser blocks, I like to use a little contour sanding pads with some sandpaper and then I also sanded those up to 220 grit as well. I tackle the glue up in two sessions. I begin by gluing the longer aprons to the legs. I apply the glue to all of the mortises and then place the dominoes in the mortises and then I clamped up each section. With the glue dry, I can assemble the rest of the base. I again put glue in all of the mortises and then place the dominoes in the mortises before flipping the base on its top to allow me to reference the flat assembly table. A few clamps later and we're all good to go. 
Now that the base is fully assembled, I break all of the edges with 220 grit sandpaper. For this design, I didn't want a heavy round over, so 220 grit is the perfect choice. Now when it came to the feet, a heavy chamfer is the perfect choice, so to cut those, I use my block plane. Before applying the finish, I clean the surface with mineral spirits. This not only removes the dust, but it also shows me any flaws that I may have missed while sanding. If I see something that the mineral spirits brings out, now's the perfect time to fix it instead of waiting until I put the first coat of finish on. And speaking of finish, I can now apply the first coat of wiping varnish. I apply the varnish using a cotton cloth. For this project, I applied three coats to the base and four coats to the top. The four coats will give me a nice protective finish. Uh, this is a coffee table, not a dining table, so while it will get some abuse, it's not going to be as bad. So four coats is what I ended up going with. Uh, but if you needed more protection, obviously you could apply five, six, or seven coats. But four coats is where I stopped. To attach the top, I placed the base on the top and then marked for the six screws. Using an eighth inch bit, I pre-drilled and then installed the screws. After the top was attached, I could put it in its final resting place. I'm super happy with the outcome and I just love the design of this piece. After about 10 hours of various SketchUp drawings, I came up with a design that I liked and just went for it. Sometimes you can get caught up in the design phase for far too long and it's best to just start building. The materials I used on this table are by far some of the best I've worked with, especially the one piece slab top. The grain is just extremely beautiful. Thanks for allowing me to share my build process with you, and if you enjoyed the build, please leave a comment below and hit the thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and hit the bell to get notifications for when I release a video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next build video. Now that I've got this in place, I think I need to build some end tables to match.